Welcome to an ultralight airplane design video from the ultralight airplane workshop. My name is Leon. We're making progress on the design of the UWS-1 ultralight airplane and we're working toward making some parts here in a few weeks hopefully and we want that first part to be rudder for the airplane. Now this airplane is a little bit different than most ultralight airplanes. The plan is to have two engines that are placed laterally out on the wings and nacelles. Now this presents a problem that most single engine planes don't have, where if you have an engine out condition where one engine dies and the other one is at say full power during a climb, then the airplane is going to want to yaw, turn hard into the direction of the failed engine and your rudder and vertical stabilizer have to be able to counter that yaw. So that's a design issue that most ultralights with a single engine don't have to deal with. Well, in order to figure that out, we need to know what the thrust of the engines are. In order to calculate what the thrust is going to be for our airplane, we need to know what the drag is going to be. So figuring out drag is what we're going to do in this video. As any of you who have had some pilot training and definitely some aeronautics training, this graph should look pretty familiar. This is the portion of the performance that has to do with drag on an airplane. And this shape is pretty familiar. You're going to have some lowest drag speed for an airplane. And then of course, as you increase speed, the drag increases. But also, as you decrease speed, the drag increases. Let's get into how we can estimate this at least roughly for an airplane. The main reason that you're going to want to know the drag for the airplane is to know if the motor you've chosen is big enough or vice versa. You figure out the drag and then you select the motor based on how much drag your airplane has. And you use that drag to size the motor. Now in flight, when you're in straight and level flight, not accelerating or decelerating, the thrust of your motor is going to equal the drag on the airplane. So once you've figured out the drag, you can figure out the thrust. Once you know the thrust, you can figure out the horsepower. Now that's just as fly straight and level. Of course you want to climb. In order to climb, you're going to need even more power from your motor. You still need to match the drag on the airplane, but you also need extra thrust to help climb. So your thrust is going to end up being more than the drag. And there are some calculations for determining how much thrust you want based on the rate of climb that you want. Now we're not going to get that into this video. We'll get that in a later video when we're trying to figure out the propeller and the motor power for the airplane. Another reason you might need to know the drag, you would not need to know this for a conventional airplane with just a single motor, but if you're going to have multi-engines and if they're going to be lateral to the center line, in other words mounted to the left and right of the center line, you'll need to know what the thrust is of those engines for an engine out condition. In other words, when one engine dies and the other engine is thrusting, it's going to create an asymmetric load on the airplane trying to yaw it in the direction of the failed motor. And you're going to need to counter that with force from your vertical tail. So in order to know how much force that tail is going to have to exert and, an, and in other words, how big to make that tail, you need to know how much thrust that engine is going to have. And so you need to know what the drag is. As I mentioned in the aero terminology video on the coefficient of drag, there are two significant contributors to drag. One is called induced drag, and that's drag due to lift generated by the wings. And then there's parasitic drag, and that's friction drag plus pressure drag. So that's two different kinds of parasitic drag. Now friction drag is just due to drag to the viscosity of the air moving over the surfaces of the wing. Now pressure drag is a little bit different. That's going to be drag like interference drag. I think we talked about that a little bit before. And also things like vortex drag behind a rounded trailing edge where you've got vortexes being created and alternating back and forth or perhaps constant vortexes. That's pressure drag and there are some other forms of pressure drag. And you can actually calculate friction drag reasonably accurately. It's a little more difficult to calculate pressure drag. And induced drag is fairly easy to calculate. Let's figure out how to do that. The induced drag is pretty easy to calculate. 
Induced drag is equal to the coefficient of induced drag multiplied by surface area of the wing and then multiplied by Q, and we've talked about Q before. Now I should mention that your horizontal tail is also going to have some induced drag because it's producing lift, except in this case it's in the downward direction. But generally it's pretty insignificant to the induced drag of the main wing, so we're going to ignore that. Now the coefficient of induced drag is pretty easy to estimate also. Take the coefficient of lift of the wing squared, and we've talked about coefficient of lift in an aerial terminology video, divided by the product of pi 3.14 times the aspect ratio of the wing. Now we can also calculate the coefficient of lift, and we've done that on a number of previous videos, but just as a reminder, it's going to be the weight of your airplane divided by the product of Q times the surface area of your wing. Now what I'm using for weight in this calculation is the empty weight of the airplane, 254 pounds, plus the weight of a standard pilot, 170 pounds, plus the weight of a parachute allowance, which is 24 pounds. And then the surface area of the wing is something that we got from a previous video on the design of the UWS-1 airplane. I'll put a link up in the upper right hand corner where we calculated the surface area for the wing. Now you can get these same equations from just about any airplane design book, but the particular one that I used was Evan's book, Light Plane Designer's Handbook. Parasitic drag is a little more difficult to calculate, and I'm going to demonstrate one of the ways that is frequently found in amateur airplane design books, and that's to use a quantity D over Q, where D is your drag and Q, of course, is your dynamic pressure. So you find D over Q of an airplane that is going to be similar to your airplane. And then you multiply by Q of whatever speed you're interested in. That will give you the parasitic drag. Now D is total drag of an airplane. So what you want to do is get your D over Q value at the maximum cruise speed. Now at your maximum cruise speed, your induced drag is going to be minimum. Let's jump back up here. So you can see when you're getting up higher and higher speed, your induced drag gets smaller and smaller. So by using a value of your maximum cruise speed, your parasitic drag is your overriding drag. It's the major portion of your drag. So it'll come reasonably close to at least for an initial estimate to calculate your parasitic drag. Now you'll see these values for D over Q for a number of different airplanes. And you, they've also got some turboprop and some turbine powered airplanes. Those don't even come close to applying for an ultralight. So I picked the ones that are a little bit closer. So something like a Cessna 150 would probably be pretty close or an Urcoop. And they've got a D over Q of 4.4. Now both of these are side by side seating airplanes. So the UWS-1 being a single seat should have a lower D over Q. Now it's interesting that the Cherokee 180 is a cleaner airplane. It has a lower D over Q. Now the very easy, the Lancer, the Q2, the Dragonfly, all are very clean airplanes. I don't think we will get down that far since we're going to have two vertical tails. I don't think we'll get down that clean. And in addition, both those tails are going to be in our prop wash, which will produce even more drag. Trying to get down, well, let's say below 2.1 is not realistic. So I think we're going to be somewhere between 2.1 and 3.9. And I'm going to guess we're about halfway between. So for our initial guess for D over Q for the UWS-1, I'm going to pick 3.0. Now we can use this then to calculate our parasitic drag. I used a spreadsheet to do that and came up with this graph. So down here at stall, we have very low parasitic drag. We're at, uh, what is it, about 6 pounds. And then up around a cruise, we have a little over, little over 30 pounds of drag. So as a first estimate, to give an initial estimate of the thrust we're going to need, I think this will work pretty well. I also played around with another method to estimate the drag on the UWS-1 ultralight. And that's using the software program OpenVSP. I've used that in quite a few of the other videos on the design of the UWS-1 Ultralight. And I thought, you know, let's just play around a little bit with this because it potentially could give us a more accurate estimation of drag, particularly since we have those nacelles out on the wing. 
Now I have quite a bit more to learn about, particularly these equations on which form of equations to use an estimated drag. But when I did the calculation, it came up with a flat plate frontal area of just a little over two square feet for the airplane. And by the way, I did this calculation at 55 knots. And it came up with a coefficient drag of 0 0.233. You can calculate your drag if you had the coefficient of drag. And that's this equation here. You take the coefficient of drag, multiply by the surface area of your wing, and then multiply by Q. I did that calculation, and I compared it to uh, the previous estimate that we talked about. Now the solid line was the previous estimate where we used D over Q. This dashed line is the estimate that I'm getting from OpenVSP. As you can see, there's quite a bit of difference here, but that's probably just because I don't understand enough about how to select which equations to use in estimating drag on OpenVSP. So I'm gonna to have to learn a little bit more about that to see if I can get a more accurate estimate of the drag. A number of things also that were not taken into account on the OpenVSP, and that's not because OpenVSP can't do it, but I just didn't put it in there, are things like interference drag and other drag. For example, the opening in the bottom of the wheel pants, other kinds of uh, pressure drag. So once I'd learned a little bit more about that, when we go back through and do an iteration on the design to try to get more concrete values, I'll probably try to use OpenVSP and understand a little bit better. Now we get back to the drag profile that we saw on the title chart, where I've taken the induced drag, the blue line, the parasitic drag, this kind of gold line, and add them together to get this green line, which is the total drag. The drag at maximum cruise then, 55 knots, looks like it's about 38.4 pounds. And the lowest drag seemed to be right around 38 and a half knots. Now I have twiddled around with the numbers a little bit, trying to play around a little bit with weight, for example, a heavier pilot or adding baggage. That tends to move the uh, lowest drag number up just a little bit higher, up around 40, 41 knots. This 38.4 pounds at maximum cruise then has to be matched by 38.4 pounds of thrust. And then I can convert that into horsepower that I need for my motor, which in this case will be electric motor, so we'll convert that into watts. And that'll help us select the motors that we're gonna need for the airplane. I can also do some calculation to come up with the best angle of climb. And then I will do a drag calculation at the best angle of climb. And then with that calculation then, I'll be able to figure out the yawing situation on the airplane when one engine fails and has to be countered by the vertical stabilizer and I'll be able to calculate the size I need for that vertical stabilizer. Now we have the drag value for the UWS-1 ultralight airplane at maximum cruise. That will allow us to calculate the drag at maximum climb angle, which is probably our situation when we're going to be most adversely affected by an engine out situation although I want to do a little more calculations to verify that. But once we have that, then we can start working on that vertical tail design. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. There'll be a little block in the lower right-hand corner of the screen that you can click on to do that.